And welcome inside East Kenwood High School and welcome to the Gotta Get It Hoops Classic. Chad Bush and Sam Stick Day with you for six games of basketball action. Some of the best in the state of Michigan are playing here today in the fourth annual Gotta Get It Hoop Classic. Uh, we're gonna start off with Ottawa Hills against Arthur Hill, second to Arthur Hill. Stick, what an exciting day of basketball first. Let's start with the setting. Mike Thomas has built one of the best tournaments in the state. He's got a showcase here today, six games of some of the best teams. We'll see ranked teams, we'll see teams that'll make surges. What a fun day ahead, glad you're with us. Yeah, it was a great tournament last year and it only seems to get bigger and better this year too. You know, you're pulling up to this great facility and you're like, well, wait, there's four different gyms I can go to. I'm kind of lost because this is such a big thing. And it's amazing that they got this many teams here, coordinated it all, and when you get this type of top caliber teams in the state too, it's gonna be an exciting day. We talked to Mike Thomas and got his thoughts on this tournament, his team, and many more things. We'll talk to the first year bench boss at East Kentwood, but what a tournament he's put in front of us today, and we're fortunate to broadcast it. We'll come back with Mike Thomas on the other side of this timeout and get his words. The founder of the Gotta Get a Classic is next. We are the prep, thanks for watching. Welcome back to the Gotta Get It Classic, the fourth annual Gotta Get It Classic. And the man responsible for the Gotta Get It Classic is to our left, the new head coach of East Kentwood High School and uh, the fourth annual Gotta Get It Classic. Thank you for having us here. No problem. Uh, what a great event and, and how exciting it must be. Let's get right into it. It's a new location. Yep. It's the same tournament. Any changes expected because of the relocation, or is this gonna be the same, gotta get it, classic, uh, superb event that we've had all four years? Well, one, one, one addition that we've added to the, uh, the, the gotta get it hoop classic is um, our freshman in JV. You know, East, Kent, East Kentwood has such a beautiful campus. We call it East Kentwood University. Oh, and so we have a why. freshman campus across campus along with a middle school campus wow. across campus. And so what we wanted to do was, was make this day all about basketball, but right here on our campus. And so um, we have four JV games going on and then four freshman games going on as well, all on campus. That's awesome. And it's, it's got to be great to be at a place that has a campus. Not many high schools <laughs> have that. This is one of a kind, man. Uh, has it been a, a easy, warm adjustment to East Kentwood? And, and could you talk just about what intrigued you to come here and uh, be a part of this community and this school? You know, um, I'm all about challenges. You know, you know, um, when you live on faith or you live your wife life through faith, you know, you don't have to apply for jobs. They come, they come calling you and asking to do, asking you to do some of the things that you do best, mm -hmm. and that's changing the culture and communities and things like that. Um, East Kentwood or Kent, the Kentwood community has been very, very welcoming to me. This has been an unbelievable place. My kids are adjusting well. My wife is adjusting well. And uh, we're excelling. And, uh, you know, I couldn't ask for a better place. And, not, you know, I've been to some great places, but this is by far probably one of the best, you know, probably the best place I've been at. Mike Thomas is a three-time state champion in the state of Michigan. Uh, twice at Kalamazoo Central and once at Grand Blanc. He's looking to do that thing here at East Kentwood. Talk about your team this year, and you mentioned it, this this program has not won a lot, uh -huh. at least at a high level. Yeah. You're looking to bring that success that you've had here. Uh, you mentioned the great facilities and the great people. How has it adjusted on the basketball court so far? Right now, you know, our guys are buying in, and one of the things that I had to come to realization is that, is that uh, we had to teach them how to win. They, they haven't won many games as, as players, and then as a team, you know, we had a couple of new guys. Um, you know, a lot of our guys had had no varsity experience. Wow. And so and we're still trying to jail, still create that experience and, and, and just still trying to be ready by, by the time March comes. And um, I got good leaders, though. You know, I got I got I got two, two or three really good leaders um, who want to be who want to who wants to lead, who wants to um, be held accountable and things like that. And so. Um, that kind of makes it easier for you, you know. But you know, the bad thing about it, he's a senior, and I'm going to miss him. But at the same time, uh, I, I'm just happy to be able to coach coach a guy like Marshawn Flakes. That's the guy I'm talking about. Sure. He's 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 one of the top guys that I've coached in my career. Yeah, Marshawn Flakes certainly sticks out. Your uh, your guards Tompkins and Hatchet, yep. and then the big guy Christian Humphrey Rembert. Everybody wants to talk about and learn more about. 
Uh, he's intriguing with his size, his skill, his talent. Tell us a little more about him. No, he's skilled, man. You know, he came to us late, and so he's still trying to uh, figure out what, what we're doing. I mean, he's, he's a smart kid, but he's, you know, he's still getting, getting you know, um, getting a feel for what we're doing. Um, unfortunately, he had a bad ankle sprain last night, and, and um, I, I had my fingers crossed this morning, and um, the trainer just gave him the, the cue to it may be fractured. So uh, he, man, we may not see him, and I don't think we're going to see him tonight. But, uh, you know, but with his skill set, man, he's going to do some really good things at the next level. You're talking about a 6'8 kid who can um, dribble the ball, shoot the ball, do some things in the post, pretty active defense, guard some guards and stuff like that. And so um, he's, his, his future is very bright. You guys haven't shied away from playing good talent on you know the me. east side or the west side, <laughs> and that's kind of your MO. We'll play anybody anywhere. Today, you get one of the best teams on the east side of the state in Orchard Lake St. Mary's, a team that you're well familiar with. Yeah. Uh, in your building, you scheduled them. Yep. yep, uh, yep. <laughs> albeit in your house, you have the right to do that. They're coming to the west side. Uh, talk about the matchup with Orchard Lake St. Mary's, who's also battled some injury and, and some eligibility things. Yeah. Um, talk about the matchup tonight and, and what you're looking forward to seeing. Well, you know, Orchard Lake is always going to bring it. Todd does a really good job over there. You know, one of the reasons why I love scheduling him is because he, he helps prepare me for what, what we need to work on, you know. And so uh, when you talk about Orchard Lake, you're talking about Trey McKinney, who's, who's one of the top players in the, in the country. Um, hopefully we can slow him down, but it's going to be hard, you know. But uh, um, I think our guys are up for the challenge. Um, you know, Orchard Lake, they have the point guard over there. Uh, what's his name? I know his number zero. I forget his name. Sherrod Barnes. Sherrod, yeah, Sherrod Barnes, is, who's, who's uh, had to wait his turn last yeah. year. And now it's his show. That's right. And uh, he's, he's really good as well. We got another smite over there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Who's shooting that ball and who's messing up my scouting report. I gotta get <laughs> we got to make sure we stop those guys. But, but that's, that's, that's Orchard Lake for you. They're always going to be good. They're always going to be competitive, and they're always going to bring it. So, and, I, and I always want to have them here. So. That's great. In closing, tell us about the Gotta Get It Classic, what it's meant to you, why you began it, and uh, just sort of what the overall message is about this day uh, and, and your great foundation. You know, um, ultimately, our, our Gotta Get It, our Gotta Get It motto, it has a meaning. Um, gotta Get It actually means um, to create a sense of urgency to accomplish unforeseen goals without making excuses. Mm. Um, that's kind of been my life, you know. And again, that's here. Mm -hmm. I'm coming here. I don't know anybody. I don't know any, you know, no, no people. I'm the new guy here, yeah. so this is unforeseen. I don't know where this is going to go, but at the same time, I want to create a sense of urgency to uh, accomplish whatever goals that our kids have. And they, they, out the gate, they say, hey, coach, um, you're used to winning championships, so let's set our goal up to that. And I was like, I don't know how, how soon we're going to do it, but let's do it. Let's, whatever we got to do, let's just do it. Um, but the Gotta Get It Classic, Hoop Classic, I started it in Kalamazoo Central, but it, it's called the Don, it was called the Don Jackson Holiday Classic. And then um, once, once we got more definition or got creative with Gotta Get It, Gotta Get It became our lifestyle. Gotta, be, gotta Get It became our logo, our nonprofit, and things like that. And so we wanted to bring that 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 kind of back back to uh, action here. And so, uh, you know, my one of my goals for having an event like this is just simply to um, create opportunities for these these nice young men who can play basketball. Man, we got guys like you that's going to create some exposure for these for these young men. Um, we want to create the atmosphere here as as we want to set this gym off as like. Little Caesars Arena or something, you know, we got re instant replays, we got jumbotrons and things like that, um, different intros and stuff. And so we, we all, we all about creating a, 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 um, a positive and, and, and um, some exposure for the guys. Love what you're doing. This is awesome. Thanks Thank for you. letting us be a small part of it. Oh, you're a huge part, man. <laughs> Congrats on all the success you've had and, and all the future success you're going to get. East Kentwood and Mike Thomas a marriage that's going to win. I can promise you that. <laughs> Thanks for letting us be uh, a part of today, and, and we look forward to catching up with you down the line. Thank you. Appreciate you, Chad. All right, you bet. Let's there have he is, today. the founder of the Got to Get It Classic and the first-year head coach for East Kentwood. Mike Thomas joins us. We're coming right back with more from the Got to Get It Classic as we roll on from East Kentwood High School. We're coming back right after this. Every year, Pinos donates $4,000 worth of scholarships to EK athletes and fine arts students to continue furthering our successes on and off the field and on and off the stage. 
We wanted to take this moment to thank Pepinos for their continued support of East Coward High School athletics and fine arts programs like theaters, band, and more. Thank you, Pepinos. Thank you, Pepinos. Thank you, Pepinos. Thank you, Pepinos. Welcome back to East Kentwood High School for the fourth annual Gotta Get It Classic. Saginaw Arthur Hill in the house against Ottawa Hills High School. Chad Bush and Stick with you. Glad to be on the west side of the state. Feels good to be over here. I know you used to do some damage on the uh, the scratch table. <laughs> yeah, the ones and the twos. Used to work for 104.5 SNX Grand Rapids. Awesome. Back in the day and lived in a city about 45 minutes north of here called Howard City. Okay. Little, little town, little town. But yeah, west side of the state, awesome to be in, always awesome to visit. And when you get to watch good basketball, makes it even more fun. No doubt. Let's get into this one, partner. We've got Ottawa Hills, a team that uh, did battle yesterday, and they lost in a tight one, 68-62, to a very good and ranked Grand Rapids Catholic Central team. They played last night. They go to 5-6, and 3-2 and two in conference stick. But look, they've been competitive. They've got guys, and they've got a coach that has some experience, and that is one. Yeah, Derek King, I mean, he's done an incredible job with the program so far. And th this is a growing team. This is one of those teams that don't judge them on what's happening early in the season. Watch how they grow throughout the season. And then, of course, once they get into the tournament, you hope they reach their full potential. And Derek King is the guy to bring it out of them. 1997, Ottawa Hills took home their last state title. They have three of them to their credit. Saginaw Arthur Hill, meanwhile, led by Tony Davis. Uh, this is a program that last won a state title in 2006. You'll recall Jason Richardson, but this team is a team that has a youngster stick that is leading them now, and uh, he's quite a freshman that's made an impression. Yeah, with the nickname Boop, Boop Hardy is going to be uh, putting on a show for us today. And remember last year's you got to get it classic. There was a huge, huge freshman influx here in the state of Michigan. You know, Trey McKinney. Uh, they, they had uh, Sherrod Barnes from Orchard Lake Lavish, St. Mary. Yeah. McLavish was who I was getting to. From, uh, we're going to watch yeah. him later on today and see how his games progress from year one to year two. We got the national anthem coming up, though. We will step aside for the national anthem. We'll come back with the starting lineups between Ottawa Hills and Arthur Hill. Coming back right after this, we're the prep. Thanks for watching. What's up guys, it's Don Irie. Another weekend. This weekend we got Irie Tacos. Man, these are some of the best tacos in the city. These do sell out. Gotta come get them Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Let me take a bite for you guys. So good. We got steak and we got chicken. Pull up. Time to meet the starters for tonight's, or this afternoon, rather's ball game. And the game one of the fourth annual Gotta Get It Hoop Classic will start with Ottawa Hills High School and their starting lineup. It'll be Quadir Hatchet, who wears number one, 5'11 guard for head coach Derek King Sr. Also in the lineup, Willie Duke, a junior, a point guard at 5'11. Isaiah Bradford, a senior guard, who wears number five. Shaman Jarrett, a guard at 5'8", and Dayton Strickland, a junior in the middle at 6'4". For Derek King Jr., the head coach in his sixth season at uh, Ottawa Hills. Now let's meet the starters for Saginaw Arthur Hill, coached by Anthony Davis. And uh, here's the starters 
Mazzy Ruddison at a guard spot. Markle Hurd, a 5'10 senior. Boop Hardy, a freshman at 5'10. You'll hear a lot about him. The sophomore Tyler Dorsey at a forward spot up front along with Lina Brooks Jr., who is a junior at 6'4". So, look, this is an opportunity stick for these teams to get off. Uh, Record-wise, Arthur Hill comes in 3-6, 0-3 in their conference. They step aside from conference play to take on Ottawa Hills, who has three state titles to their credit. What do you look for today? Uh, for Ottawa Hills, I'm looking for Dayton Strickland. You know, he, before the game, he was showing he's a high flyer. He's dunking in warm-ups. That's the guy that I'm going to be looking forward to seeing play. And then, of course, we've already mentioned him, Boop Hardy. Quick hands, quick everything. He's a flash on the court, and here we go. A lot of fun to watch, and right off the bat, we get a bucket and a lay-in. And that was so quick. That was uh, Quadir Hatchet with a bucket. So 2 nothing. the first bucket took five seconds. Into the paint, hop, skip, jump, no. That's the freshman Hardy, and that's out of bounds. Back to Ottawa Hills, who played last night, Stick, in a competitive game. Let me ask you, does that help them that they played last night and played well? Um, yes and no. You know, it's going to be tough to tell. We'll see in the fourth quarter how their legs are holding up. That's really the indicator. A top 10 team that they competed well with. There's a layup right side that's too strong. That's from Strickland. Back the other way comes Arthur Hill. And this is turned over. So sloppy early. Duke has the steal, missed the lay-in. And now the throw ahead and clear ahead. Here comes Ruddison. Kick back into the paint. Nice passing, power layup, good. And the game is tied thanks to Tyler Dorsey, the sophomore center. Yeah, a nice look by Brooks there, too, with the extra pass. Sure was. Layup up, no. It's a wall up. No foul called. The shot was up by Bradford. Good job by the officials with a no call, you think? Yeah, so far so good. And, you know, interesting about this tournament is there's a shot clock in high school basketball, too. That's something that we should point to. I think so. That is a good point, too, because I totally forgot about that. 35-second <laughs> shot clock is implemented. Arthur Hill shows a zone. Cross-court pass somehow sneaks through. Attack of the paint, and the lay-in with the left hand is good. Credit the bucket to Quadir Hatchet, the senior guard. I love that take and the left-handed balance, taking the contact and getting it in. That is a strong take by Mr. Hatchet. Yes, sir. Ottawa Hills comes to us from the Gold Conference and the Ottawa Kent Conference, the OK Conference as they call it out here. Oh, There's a block, went up and swallowed that thing. That was Lina Brooks Jr. Back the other way they go with numbers. Lumberjack, free throw line extended, dump down left block, rejection. One rejection deserves another. That was Strickland on this side, but Stick, the athletes are starting to show out early. Yeah, Strickland gets called for the contact there, but once again, another great pass by Brooks, finding the big man down low, and here you get a nice look at Brooks' block. My goodness, he's above the rim. Yes, sir. High-flying athlete, Lina Brooks. Right now it's a line left for Tyler Dorsey, and Dorsey rattles one home. Four to three, Arthur Hill cuts the lead in half, trying to get used to the scoreboard here. Lina Brooks Jr., good sized kid, and a threat for Arthur Hill out of the Saginaw Valley League. Full court pressure applied, a little 2-2-1 here. Mid post jumper up and good. Smooth looking jumper from Quadir Hatchet Stick. That's his third bucket. I was gonna say, he's off to a hot start today. He's gonna be somebody that they wanna pay attention to for the Lumberjacks. The freshman with a sharp dime. But Boop's pass was bobbled in the travel. But how about this move and attack with confidence? Yeah, you like the way he's been taking it. You know, he took it strong and went to the rim that time, a little fade away. Little mid-range game. Showing versatility. Yes, sir. Passed it up top side for a dead spot right triple, and it's down. That's Shaman Jarrett with a triple, the senior point guard. And it's now a five-point lead for Ottawa Hills. And the assist by Hatchet. Nice little dime piece. Dribble drive baseline, reverses up and good. That's Markel Hurd, you heard. It's the senior at 5'10". Short corner left floater brought rain. No stick back off the glass is good. That's Strickland, 11 to six now. Back to a five point bump. And Strickland's already showing he's a, a big force in that paint on both sides. Yes, he has. 
Step back jumper from 15, no. Stick back Lina, yes. And the Lumberjacks have cut it to three. With five to go in the first. Ooh, how about the attack from Bradford with confidence in English? And a spin on that, you could see it all the way. He knew he was going a little bit under the rim and had to get some English on it. How about the pace of this game, huh? I love it. Dorsey pulls up for a 16-footer, no. The shot clock has not been a factor yet. <laughs> no. <laughs> There's a two-time pressure. The way these teams play, it's not really going to matter. When you get to the De La Salles and, and you get to the, you know, some of those kinds of teams that have a slower pace, it is going to become a factor. I mean, we watched a game last year where the ball was dribbled for four and a half straight minutes. So, yeah, that will not be happening in this tournament. That's right. We'll see one of those teams involved in that game later. Mid-post runner off the glass, and a little stick back for Hatchet. Hatchet has eight of the 15 points for Ottawa Hills. And he assisted on the other three-pointer. Oh, nice pickpocket. Picket mid-court, coast to coast, reverse, yes! That's Isaiah Bradford. Bradford on fire, he's hit a couple, he has four. My goodness, the pace. Pull up, dead spot right, triple, no. Rebound back to the man who shot it. Ooh, and a rejection at the rim. Was that Strickland again? Back the other way. Ottawa Hills, line left three. Rim out, no. Lumberjacks on the run, three on one. Back to the left side, line of Brooks, no, missed the dunk. Oh, and he came down very hard. Glad he popped right back up. Yeah, boop with the rebound, back to the right short corner. Kick out three on the way. Ruddison triples. And the Lumberjacks have cut this thing to six. 17 to 11. I feel like we're outdoors watching a pickup game with these guys just going back and forth with skilled players. This is a great first game to kick off this tournament. It is. Would you imagine that this is a three and six team without a win in conference against a team that's five and six? I, I mean, would not. Yeah. Three pointer, no. Finally a miss for Bradford. Rebound ripped down by Boop. Boop on the run, the freshman. Long corner left, jumper no. Shot long by Ruddison. Yeah, and even though that wasn't blocked, Strickland had definitely altered it. Yep. Brooks with a reach in. And with two and a half to go in the first quarter, we'll take a breath, finally. My goodness, <laughs> 17 to 11. Two minutes and 29 seconds left in the first, and I feel like we've already played a half. Man, are all six games going to have this pace? I hope so. <laughs> Block shot, but a foul. And Man. that's the guy that has been pushing the pace on both ends of the court, really. Hatchet has been doing his thing, raining from outside, taking it to the lane, assisting on shots, and there you go, getting the contact and getting to the free throw line. You see it right here. And you like that, attacking a shot blocker, you go into his body, because as we know, Dorsey is a formidable shot blocker. Big time. First free throws of the game for Ottawa Hills. And it's a rim off. <laughs> Missed them both. Hardy with a rebound. On the run to the hole, shot short. Pulled down by Hatchet. Pushing again. 35 second shot clock's in play, but it hasn't come into play yet. Yeah, I don't even think a 10 second shot clock would come into play yet. <laughs> Two minutes left in the first quarter. It's been a fun one. Six point lead for Ottawa Hills, who played last night. Splash City make it a nine point lead, their largest of the game for the Bengals of Ottawa Hills. And they get the steal, get it back, and an and one for Hatchet. My goodness, they are dominating this game. I was just gonna compliment how they broke down that uh, zone defense by getting the ball into the center of the lane. Well, you can't even call a play with how fast these guys are going. You're, you're trying to call it, next thing you know, they're getting a steal and an and one. A three the old school way, about to be attempted after the conventional triple. The Lumberjacks now facing their largest deficit of 11. They're being doubled up on the road in Ottawa Hills country. Free throw falls home. First free throw make. 
in three tries. And Stick, this is a 12-point lead now. Pressure applied by the Bengals who've come to play today. Yeah, they're on pace to score, what, 92 points? Yeah. I let you figure the math out. <laughs> I just show up. Pocket left, Boop with it. Top side. Arthur Hill needs a bucket. Step back, triple, this would help. Nothing home. Ripped off by Bradford. Here come the Bengals up front by a dozen with a minute 10 left. This looks like they're getting settled in that offense again to attack the zone, trying to get it into the middle to hatch it. What do they got here? A little, this is a little 2 3. Mm hmm. All right. I like the Argyle <laughs> on the side, a la North Carolina for the Lumberjacks. Near steal, a gamble indeed. Pocket left three, Splash City. This time it's coming from the Duke of Ottawa Hills. 15 point lead, partner. And you could hear Derek King on the sideline tell him, shot clock, fellas, shot clock. Yeah. To the hole, layup, good. And it's all too easy right now for Hatchet and the Bengals. Hatchet has 10, and the Bengals at their largest lead is 17. Boop to the hole, hop, skip, jump, and a foul. And the Lumberjacks are about to attempt to stop what's been a long run. It's been an 11-0 run over the last two minutes. Well, I don't know what Mr. Hatchet ate for breakfast this morning, but that's a routine that you're going to want to stick to. He has come out to play today, and here you get a look at the foul that's going to send Boop to the line. Right. It was on the floor. They called it on the floor. Yeah, my bad on that. They did call it on the floor. So there's a steal, 20 seconds left. Throw ahead, Bradford layup good. And the Bengals have 30 points in this quarter and they are up 19 points. Arthur Hill gets another ball swipe from him. Layup good. Wow. Hatchet with a bucket. Give him 15 first quarter points. The buzzer sounds and wow, the Bengals came to play. They're looking to get back last night's loss. We're coming back to the gotta get it, Hoop Classic right after this. Are you prepared to be transformed into a better version of yourself? Shaped into a force that others can't imagine. We are part of something bigger. A force that never quits. America's Navy. Forged by the sea. Check us out at Navy.com. Ottawa Hills, the Bengals have come out on fire. Five and six on the year, but this team's looking like 11-0 uh, and 0 at this point. Derek King, senior, the head coach. They play out of the gold, as we told you. 1,266 strong for this co-ed public institution. Three-time state champions are the Bengals, last in 97. And you'll recall Jalen Whitehead, 2019 grad, a guy that uh, played a little bit at JC and also plays currently at Coastal Carolina in beautiful South Carolina. Welcome back, Chad and Stick with you. The Bengals force another turnover, and they throw it ahead, but it's tipped out of bounds. They will keep possession, I believe, near sideline. But what a quarter, 32 points for the Bengals. Timeout on the floor, we'll keep it right here, but Stick, I mean, we gotta talk about this. The pace for the Bengals and the efficiency in the first quarter uh, really unseen so far by us. I mean, we've called high school games where teams totally put together 32 points in an entire game. Yeah. 32 points in eight minutes doesn't even happen at the NBA level if you think about it, you know, because that would that'd be a 60-point quarter if you project it to right. 15 minutes or 12 minutes. It's insane what they just did efficiently. And it started on the defensive end. A lot of easy buckets in transition, getting strips, getting steals, being able to get it. And then I cannot speak highly enough about how Hatchet has just been able to have his way on both sides of the ball. I mean, he's stealing, he's assisting, he's getting to the rim. What does he have, 15 total points in that first quarter, leading the way for Ottawa Hills. Very impressive. They shoot 14 of 21 from the floor. Meanwhile, the Lumberjacks, 4 of 14. So, 
Here we go. Basketball in the hands of the Bengals. It's been a scorch net. 21 shots they've gotten up in this uh, first eight minutes. And we've got a whistle and a foul. 35 second shot clock is in play for all these games. It's part of a test and a trial. And uh, it has not come even close in this game yet. By the way, the next game coming up is a battle between Benton Harbor and Flint Beecher. Beecher, of course, the nine-time state title holders. And yeah, they've always had a solid program. Yes, sir. Kick out, left corner, nice cross-court pass. Three no good. And the fight out of bounds and the friendly fire will cost the Lumberjacks a chance at a rare stop. Yeah, well, we haven't seen a bucket in 40 seconds. I don't know what's going on here in this game. <laughs> But yeah, that's tough for Arthur Hill. Two men fighting over the rebound. You need every possession you can get at this point, being down 21. Ball out of bounds play, right corner. It's a nice one, but the shot is off. Boop on the run. They need his help. The freshman going to draw the foul, and uh, he'll get line left and try to get the first points of this quarter. Yeah, and I like that take by him. He had the angle on the defender, so why not use that speed, use his body, and for a freshman to be able to beat this strong and have this much balance, it's going to be scary to see what this kid can do in four years. The most points in a quarter, if you're wondering, all time in the MHSA history is 49. Oh, wow. It was on a way they did it, and they did it against Fife Lake Forest. Is that a real name, Fife <laughs> Lake? Not Dan Fife or Dugan or Jeremy? Okay. Okay, so 32 is a lot, but not even close to that 49. And they did it against Fife Lake. I mean, this is against Saginaw Arthur Hill. You know, no, no disrespect. Yep. But, yes, indeed it was that 49 points, individually 32 points in a quarter by Larry Fogel. From, from Detroit Cooley. Back in 72. Who could forget that team in 72? 32 points for the Bengals right now. Fogel had that in a quarter. My goodness. Well, thanks to our statisticians for being quick on that. Yep, Jamie Johnson and Pat Bush. Pat the stat in the house. We appreciate their hard work. Alex Westfall, your executive producer. Ball out of bounds. Meanwhile, Boop hit a free, couple free throws down here. We got a bucket. Um, Arthur Hill with a little bit of life. And that's what Arthur Hill's going to have to do. They're going to have to try to turn defense into offense. They're going to have to try to get some quick points on the board because they are chasing a lion right now. Yeah. Pardon me, they missed the free throws, got a bucket. Apologize, I was blabbering. And pardon me, instead of a lion, they're chasing a bangle right now. Ah, yes. Long three-pointer from Kalamazoo. Triple team. How about it? That is Craig Herskin Jr. with a triple, and the Bengals are just throwing up anything, and it's going in. What a beautiful release. It was pretty. Boop to the hole, draws the foul. And the guilty party is going to be number 10, Alphonse Sanders, who's checked into the lineup. And I like this aggressiveness. Here's another look at that three-pointer. Look at this. From way beyond the three-point line, nice release, nice rotation, nothing but the bottom of the net. Four of eight from downtown are the Lumberjacks. Or excuse me, four of eight from downtown are the Bengals. Just one of four with the money ball are the Lumberjacks. Substitution into the game. Comes number 12, this is uh, Mandison Holmes Lee, a junior at six foot. This is the freshman sensation, Dion Cuevas Boop Hardy. Missed the free throw, got it, and threw it back in. So Hardy's missed his free throws, but he's got the rebound or got the steal and scored a bucket after both misses each time. And on the way up, Sanders took an elbow to the face. Some incidental contact, but he's up. He shook it off. Okay. Here he comes to set the pick. 20-point lead for the Bengals. Pass off the zone pressure. Kick left wing. Three ball is through. And my goodness, Guess the assault who? continues. Quad deer hatchet with a three. Give him 18 points in this game. Man, there's a steal. Throw ahead, layup, good. That's Craig Herskin Jr. who has his second bucket within a minute. And it's a 40 to 15 lead, a 25 point cushion 
for the home Bengals. Well, Ottawa Hills has just sped up Saginaw Arthur Hill. They, they haven't had a chance, chance to get settled into their offense. Seven turnovers to zero turnovers. That is a major factor into this game. And when you can speed a team up like that, getting playing uncomfortable, next thing you know, they're forcing things that they shouldn't force, and this is what you get, a 40 to 15 ball game. That's right. Into the game comes 22. This is Kamari and Gibson. Out of the game goes uh, Sanders. Gibson is a big fella. Yes, he is. So looks like he could plug a hole or set a screen or two that I would avoid. That's where, where you just kind of get out of the way. Yeah, it looks like a linebacker. Yeah. There's a foul down low in the left block, and uh, they are going to get Duke with a foul. 5-13 left. It's been all Bengals, a 25-point lead. They're shooting 65%, and their opponent's shooting 33%. And they've gotten a lot of steals and easy looks. Up and under, Hardy shot up, draws the foul, and shows a little bit of life for Arthur Hill in that low block. Lina Brooks, line left for two. Yeah, and he showed some great patience there, too, keeping his pivot foot on the ground, just working into the lane. Watch him. He stays low, stays low, doesn't go straight up with it, and forces the defender to overcommit. That foul's on Duke. And uh, that is his second foul. Line left. This is Brooks, who they like a lot. Nets the free throw. Five rebounds for Hardy to lead the way. Six points for Dorsey to lead the way for Saginaw Arthur Hill. Under Tony Davis. Free throw no good, offensive rebound, it's Hardy again, kicks it back to Brooks, had it blocked, got it back, and is fouled again going up. Arthur Hill is fighting stick, and uh, that's something you can certainly appreciate. And that's what I was just going to say, these guys aren't going away, they're scrappy, and there's still a lot of ball game to play, and you see here these offensive rebounds, Boop getting it over your big man, and then of course, once again, Hardy doing the same thing. Line left, free throw up and good. Back into the lineup, returning is Quadir Hatchet. He's a run stopper. Hatchet's been on quite a run today. 18 points in about a quarter and a minute. And to this point, he's outscored Arthur Hill. Yeah, how about that? Now it's a tie ball game with Hatchet. <laughs> Hatchet gets them both. Arthur Hill just 5 of 10 from the stripe. They've been there but haven't taken advantage. There's a nice steal. Poke ahead from Hurd with a steal. Brooks with a lay-in, blew the bunny. And Lumberjacks can't get the rebound. Throw ahead. Right block, patient layup is good by the freshly checked in Gibson. Yeah, once again, showing great patience in the lane, in the paint. Kick out, Brooks. Shot no. Bengals want to run. Four and a half left till the break. Blocked from behind. Was that? Uh, it was Boop. That was Boop doing it all. Three on two developing. Right block layup is good. And this is uh, Lina Brooks Jr. again. The junior at 6'4". Playing well today. Yeah, definitely. And when you get the ball to him in the paint, he's either going to get to the free throw line or get it in the bucket. Oh, nice pass. How about it from the right elbow? Share to the sugar to the big fella. Back-to-back -back buckets for Gibson. But the dime was the showcase there. Boop to the hole. Glass or no. The foul's on the floor, says your official. I like what Arthur Hill has done here, though, in this second quarter. I mean, they're still down 24 points, but they are definitely pushing the action. They're forcing some uh, you know, free throws, and they're being the aggressor. They are. The attack and the reward at the free throw line. Arthur Hill has been to the stripe now what will be 12 times after these two attempts. Brooks with seven points. Dorsey with six. And that one's off the mark for Hardy.
Top side three splash. Why not do it again? 21 blackjack. Quadir hatchet for three. And how do you stop him? I mean, he's doing everything. Here he is on the defensive end, too. He's controlling the offense. You see it when you press out on him. He's got the ability to pass. He is showing a complete, well-rounded game today. Look at this, Dick. I mean, the range, the confidence. The crossover to get open. Yeah. <laughs> Down to the paint. Fine look. The kick out was too firm for Lee. And uh, sometimes you, you get in position like that, you just want to put it up. Yeah, he was looking to make the right play, but unfortunately a little bit off with that pass and it results in a turnover. Ottawa Hills on pace to hit half a hundred here in the first game of the first half of the Gotta Get a Classic. And that's slowing them down from the first quarter. It sure is. The pace has slowed a bit. And this is the main reason why right here, Hatchet, the senior guard doing it all, kicks it, pocket left, three, no. And the offensive rebound attempt, and this is going to go against the brawny Kamarian Gibson, and that'll be his first. And just doing what you do with that big booty and boxing out, you know. That's what you do. You put it on him and push him out the lane. But look at this take. Look at this pass. That could have been another assist. Great open court play by him. And then there you go. Just two guys going at it trying to get that rebound. But resulting in more free throws for Saginaw Arthur Hill. Yeah. And there's, you know, they can put points up with the clock stopped. It seems like they're getting to the free throw line more, that they're kind of pushing the pace on this game, but every time you look up, they're down by more. I know. Hard to catch up. Trading buckets, too. You need a little three for two, and it's just been one triple in this game for Arthur Hill. Line left is Hurd. Misses the front end of the one and one, and a foul over the back that's going to go. We call it a jump ball. Oh, thank you. Yep. So it will be a full court press. 47 to 20. It's been all bangles. It was about a five point game a couple minutes in and then really extended as the Bengals went on a 13 nothing run. And this fella, a big part of it. Kick out left corner three, long. And nobody wants this rebound. Lumberjacks will clear. They have numbers if they can push. Heard with it. Now cleared by Lee. Right block. Banker is good. Credit the bucket to Brooks. And they broke the full court press and were able to get a nice layup. But man, what chaos Ottawa Hill causes. Sure do. Very active in passing lanes and with their hands. They just force you to make a play. Yeah, well, you said it best. They speed you up. Nice Euro step to the bucket and a fine finish. Getting through traffic. Markel Hurd, the senior guard. It's a whistle and a timeout on the floor. We'll take it with them. 94 seconds left until halftime. We're the prep. Thanks for watching. the innocence of youth. Is there anything any better? But soon they'll be in high school and facing all the same challenges you faced. How to make friends, how to fit in, how to be cool. We want our children to have everything they'll need to live fulfilling and productive lives. Make sure the kids in your family are among the more than 300,000 participants here in Michigan who take part in high school sports. There you see the Lumberjacks, three and six on the year. Best win, well, they knocked off Roseville. We can relate to that. They're close to Metro Detroit. It's a good win. We saw Roseville. Saginaw lost a tight one, or excuse me, Arthur Hill lost a tight one to Saginaw, their rival. Oh, that's a heated rival. Talks about them combining at some point. I thought that was happening. I think I didn't get the memo on anything that changed. Meanwhile, the Lumberjacks with a three on one. And a spin and a lay-in by the man of the second quarter for second Arthur Hill partner, Lina Brooks, Jr. I feel bad for our statisticians. There are about three turnovers on that one possession alone. I don't know how you keep score of that. Yeah, Pat the stat is all over it. And so is Jamie Johnson. Count it and the foul. And that's Mr. Gibson. 
who's built like a brick blank house. He'll go line right with 62 seconds left, and uh, he's made his presence felt. Yeah, and we saw it when he checked in the game. This is an imposing young man, and he is tough to move when he gets down low, and he has been dominating that offensive glass. Look at him just move the defender out of the way with a little shoulder nudge. We'll call it a nudge. Yeah. Oof, big fella. Got a little uh, skill to go with that, Braun. Missed the free throw, though. Throw ahead, Lumberjacks with a three on one. Kick right corner, Lee to the elbow. Boop to the baseline, and he threw it away. And the turnovers to the tone now of nine in this game in the first half. I've seen full court presses before, but I've rarely seen four men in the front court trying to attack where you leave one defender back to defend the other three. Yeah. But it's been causing chaos and working for Ottawa Hills. It has. Yeah, you think that throw ahead pass would hit home. You just can't get it though. Yeah. It's a really aggressive press. It is, and you can tell it's uh, it's well practiced mm -hmm. and has been executed well. But under 30 seconds, we may have a shot clock uh, come into play here. No, we won't. Here's well, but this is when the shot clock is important, right? Near the yes. end of the half, near the end of the game. This is when this 35 second shot clock's really gonna show itself here in this tournament, especially in some later on games too that we expect to be a little bit closer than this. But at the same time, you know, high school kids aren't used to playing with a shot clock, so they gotta keep that in the back of their head. We've already heard the coach for Ottawa Hills, Derek King, yelling it out, letting them know as a reminder they have a shot clock. Shot clock is dark now with 24 seconds left. Line right is uh, Hatchet trying to add to his outstanding day. Missed the free throw. Second chance, third chance. Will there be a fourth? No. Throw ahead. Attack, kick, left corner. Lee for three, no, short. Offensive rebound, Brooks. Put back and a travel before it. And it'll be the final possession for the Bengals with 7.8 seconds left and the shot clock off. But you gotta be impressed with Brooks in this quarter. He's really kept uh, Arthur Hill in the ball game as close as they can be. For sure, the push ahead in the final three seconds. Kick left corner, three ball on the way short. The fight for the rebound, Gibson there. And the polling guard pulls a hole wide open, but that's how the half ends. So. Ottawa Hills does not reach half 100, but they got pretty darn close. It was a convincing first half for the Bengals trying to hold on against Arthur Hill. The first game of the Gotta Get It Hoop Classic. Glad you're with us. Come on back for a special halftime guest right after this. Another weekend. This weekend we got Irie Tacos. Man, these are some of the best tacos in the city. These do sell out. Gotta come get them Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Let me take a bite for you guys. So good. We got steak and we got chicken. Pull up. We begin with your dream your drive, your grit, the heart and vision of every member of your team. We take it all, and from those threads of greatness, we weave a uniform of a champion. In many ways, our sport is just like yours. We've brought together a team of elite designers. We've put in the time and the sweat, perfecting our craft over 14 years. We've outfitted thousands of teams for thousands of victories, approaching each new project, each new game, like it's the only one we'll ever play. And let's be honest, we've done it all with a quality so unmatched that some can't help but call it perfection. You know, it's more than just a shirt. Look like a champion, play like a champion. A champion powered by the G. Hashtag G Brand USA. G Brand USA. Elite design, unmatched quality, American pride. 
We're proudly made in the USA. Hi folks, Dr. Joe here with Michigan Orthopedic Surgeons. We all know that our wives and daughters deserve special attention, but that's especially true when it comes to their knees. Do you know that females are at a two to five times risk compared to their male counterparts when it comes to blowing out their knees? It doesn't seem fair, but it's true. The reasons include the way females are made and the way they fire their muscles. But fortunately, there are injury prevention programs out there that can greatly decrease this risk of injury. And if you do know a female who blows out her ACL, don't despair. We have neat, innovative, minimally invasive ways to fix their knees and get them back onto the field. For more information, go to miorthosurgeons.com. Welcome back to East Kentwood High School and the Gotta Get It Hoop Classic. Mike Thomas hosting quite an event here and new to this west side, sort of a return trip for him, but our guest now is a guy that's well acquainted with the west side and uh, it's the head coach of the East Kentwood Girls Program and also the climate specialist for the East Kentwood Schools. Glad to bring in Eric Large, former All-Stater at Ottawa Hills High School. Pleasure's all mine, pleasure all mine. How about Ottawa Hills, your alma mater, mm -hmm. in the first half, putting up darn near half a hundred points. Let's start there. Mm -hmm. uh, what a showing for them. Well, they came out very intense. Uh, full court press the whole first half. Uh, Hatchet, he came out blazing. Yeah. He's running the show, he's passing the ball well, and he's shooting the ball well as well. Yeah, he sure is. Hatchet uh, in the first half with 21 points. And at the break, it's uh, 49 to 26. We're with Eric Large. Look, Eric, uh, let's talk about how important it is for your program yes. and, 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 and building a winner here, building things the right way. You've been able to do that. Talk about your program here, the girls uh, basketball team at East Kentwood. Well, we, we currently we're ranked top 15 in uh, Division One. Uh, yeah, and culture is everything. You want to make sure you do it the right way from preseason to um, postseason. You know, you want to make sure that everyone stays engaged, work ethic. Make sure we do it first in the classroom as well, though. I pride myself on uh, we got 13 girls on the team, and 11 of them are all academic. Wow. You know, so I stress that. I want them to make sure if they do get recruited that they will be eligible, NCAA red, um, eligible. Sure. So, yeah, and so, but we're big on that. We stay in the gym, but like I said, we make sure we take care of things in the classroom first. A new head coach coming into this building, and Mike Thomas yes. was that guy this year. Uh, what was it about Mike Thomas that when you met him and, and, and began to form a relationship or get to know him, uh, that, that made you think that, hey, look, he's going to do great things at this school? Well, I went and watched him at the semifinals last year at the Breslin. And I told him, I said, me personally as a coach, I fell in love with his coaching style. It was a play that happened in his previous school, and he apologized to his team during the, during the actual play of the game. He said, oh, you guys, that was my fault. I don't think we covered that, but we're going to adjust. When, he, when you can admit something that you did that was a mistake, yeah. and then the, the, you know, the buy-in is going to be tr tremendous you know, and enormous. At the, and I can see how how students and kids relate to him yeah. and want to play for him. No doubt. Uh, you were a part of a state champion Correct. Uh, at Ottawa Hills, uh, 1996? Correct, 97. 97, yes. your senior year, yes. you were an All-Stater. You went on to Jackson State, a McDonald's mm -hmm. All-American candidate as well. Yes. Talk about your career and, and kind of knowing where you wanted to go after your career was over on the right. basketball court and how you made that decision to get into coaching and leadership of young men and women. Well, you know, everybody has aspirations to play professional. And I, um, it was the CBA at the time, not the G League. Sure. So, so when I got out of uh, school, I was in Gary, Gary Steelheads for a while. Okay. And it just didn't work out. And I was blessed to have a free education. So getting a free education, we got to put that to work. And so coaching, I, I played point guard. So everybody knows the point guard is a, a, a direct reflection of a coach. 
So um, I just had that hat on at all times. And so I, I enjoy coaching so much. And I, I started off coaching at Ottawa Hills um, when I got out, when I, when I finished my career okay. of playing. And so once I got in coaching, it's just infectious that when you see kids learning, it's just like education as a teacher. But if you can see yourself teaching kids the game of basketball, it's, it's, it's very rewarding. The Gotta Get a Classic, and we are visiting with Eric Large, the head coach of the East Kentwood Girls Program, and also a guy who's the climate specialist for all of the East Kentwood schools, and they're happy to have him. We're happy to have I you. Appreciate I, I appreciate it. I want to get your it. thoughts on Jackson State, obviously, uh, the big talk about <laughs> right. Deion Sanders, and to have somebody like that come to your alma mater. Yes. I mean, I, I know it's football, right. but to have a guy like that come to Jackson State and do what he did mm -hmm. and make that big of an impression, and he didn't have to do that, yes. how, how cool was that to well, you? Well, and, and I've, I've sat down with him probably four times since he was there. Is that I, right? try, I always go back okay. and go to homecomings and things of that nature. He's authentic, and he really wanted to pour everything into HBCUs. And so, and he wanted to bring a light to it. So a lot of people were disappointed that he left, but the things that he he done for oh. Jackson State as well as all black colleges sure. was, was it, like I say, it was a tremendous feat for him. So he, they have the actual NFL Combine in Jackson now. Mm. They were on Good Morning America. They had College Game Day there. <laughs> so it was just a beautiful thing for my alma mater to have him for the brief time. And so, and and of course the recruits. It, it just, you know, they multiplied when he was there. But I think they're going to do a good job. A uh, good friend of mine, T.C. Taylor, he's the head coach now. He was there when I was when I was playing basketball. Okay. He was playing football. So, but it, it was just it's just great for the world to see, you know. Yeah. Uh, and, 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 and that's Coach Prime. Though. He's going to bring that. Yeah. So that was a great thing for us. A lot of fun to watch. Fun to watch your program from afar. And great right. to meet you finally. And uh, right. We wish you all the best. I do appreciate it. Yeah, we wish you all the best, and, and uh, we'll, we're going to keep tabs now. Now that we, we know right. you at this level, we're going to we'll be following East Kentwood. Yes. No strangers to the west side or the prep anymore. Glad to have met you, right. Eric Large, the head coach of East Kentwood Girls Basketball. We're coming back with Stick and more analysis as we start the second half of game one of the Gotta Get a Classic. Every year, Pinos donates $4,000 worth of scholarships to EK athletes and fine arts students to continue furthering our successes on and off the field and on and off the stage. We wanted to take this moment to thank the Pinos for their continued support of East Kentwood High School athletics and fine arts programs like theaters, band, and more. Thank you, Pepinos. Thank you, Pepinos. Thank you, Pepinos. Thank you, Pepinos. Welcome back to East Kentwood High School. Game one has one half gone by. Stick your thoughts on the fast action packed first half. And that was just it. Fast pace in your face. Uh, crazy pressure by Ottawa Hills and you know Arthur Hill. They, they did a good job in the second quarter forcing some action. So we'll see how it picks up here in the third. Yes, sir. 21 points by Hatchet in the first half. The big story for Ottawa Hills. Fade away long corner jump shot is no good. Off the mark from Dorsey. Yeah, you're wondering what the conversations were at halftime. You know, for Ottawa Hills, you want to tell them, hey, keep the pace, keep the pressure in the backcourt. Seems to be affecting Arthur Hill. And then for Arthur Hill, hey, let's keep getting to the lane, getting to the rim. Fouls are our friend in the second half. The shot clock is under eight. And for the first time today, dribble drive and a foul with three on the clock. And that is just a killer. And, and when you're not used to a shot clock, I can imagine recognition of it uh, certainly stick is different. Yeah, and also, you know, you got to understand that when you get a foul like that with four seconds, it's a complete reset to 35 seconds, not like in the pros where it's only a 14 right. second on a 24. Good call. Three left corner, no good. That's from Hatchet. It's a rare miss. And the rebound swallowed in by Dorsey. 
Here come the Lumberjacks who shot 37% in the first half. Trying to get something going. Steal. Ninth steal of the game, and that is a bucket. Count the bucket. That's from Bradford. He has 11 now. He's the number two scorer today for Ottawa Hills. Yeah, but you love that effort by Brooks. Look at him get up there. We'll see if he gets it on the backboard first. He does, but look at that athleticism uh, by Brooks. Brooks is the guy that has to get going again for Saginaw Arthur Hill as we see a turnover by that press. Pull up right elbow jumper off the pick. It's Duke with a deuce. And the Bengals are up 53 to 26. Full court pressure applied. Silky deuce. No doubt. On the floor, ball loose. Lumberjacks come away with it. But it's just so hard to even get the ball across half court. And then when you get it, you feel rushed. That's the thing. They're getting it. They have the man advantage. They should slow it down and try to take advantage of that. But you're so sped up from just trying to get it over. It's tough. Yeah. It's an it's a incredible thing that they're doing, like dictating the offense's pace. Checking out of the lineup is uh, Willie Duke. He looks to be grasping a hand or something. He'll take a seat into the lineup. Coming in is uh, Adrian McDaniels. Dribble drive off the glass, maybe rejected, but back to Ottawa Hills. Ball loose, ball picked up, all alone. Bradford pocket three, no. Big boy rebound and a foul over the back. That's Brooks with a glasser. And we're going back the other way. Yeah, Brooks, to me, is having a great game. What has he got, 11 points, seven yeah. rebounds, an assist. You know, he's, he's all over the court right now. And he's kind of got a mismatch on the offensive end. I'd like to see him ISO him a little bit if they can get the ball across half court. Steal by McDaniels and a pull-up jumper's good. Mid-court steal, Bradford again to the hole, rejected. That's Dorsey with a block looking for help. He's got it across mid-court and a three-on-two if he wants it. Lee, dump pass, left block was pretty. They missed the shot, but the stick back by Brooks is there. <laughs> they did finish the possession stick, but it wasn't without a lot of effort. No, and once again, they had the advantage, right? The man advantage, they get a wide open bunny, they, they miss it, but fortunately Brooks is there to pad the stats for him. He gets a rebound and two points on that trip down the floor. Did you say pat the stats? <laughs> I said pad the stats, but look at ah. Nice easy bunny misses it, but Brooks is right there for the cleanup. Brooks, to me, is the, the factor mm. for Arthur Hill that needs to come through. I mean, they're making up a lot of deficit. 27 points is quite a, quite a bit to overcome. But Brooks is the guy that has to come alive, and he has come alive. He has indeed a big day for the junior forward. 13 points and eight rebounds. We take a look at the conference standings thus far, or at least as of uh, 119, and the OK goal. Grand Rapids Catholic Central with a big win yesterday over Ottawa Hills, but Ottawa Hills kept it tight. And uh, that was a win for them, I'm sure somewhere along the lines, but Ottawa Hills is uh, three and one in conference play. Five and five overall, speaks to the challenging schedule they play, make it five and six overall. And uh, that's a tough conference and a huge conference, the OK. Uh, specifically, the gold, though, has some good teams in it with South Christian and Grand Rapids Catholic Central. Yeah, GRCC always has a good program no matter what sport it is. And they'll be playing later on tonight against Warren De La Salle, Grand, Grand Rapids Christian High School. Yes, sir. Looking forward to that one. That's game five of six. There's a steal. That's Brooks and a foul in the backcourt. They're going to get hatchet, it looks like, with a push. Yeah, look at Brooks. He said, come on, let's speed this up. Let's get it going. He, he's going to be the emotional leader for this team, and he's doing it physically, too. Yes, sir. Can handle the rock a bit. Nice feed left block. Laying good. Tyler Dorsey, thanks to Brooks, who's been the best player in this second half. And there you go. He gets the steal, then the assist on the other end. Hatchet to the hole, all too easy. He has his first bucket of the second half. Give him 23 and give the Bengals a 27 point lead. And that's what's so tough. Look at this, four men in the front court for their press. Somebody's gotta be ahead and that's a 10 second violation. The shot clock does not lie. 
So even when they don't get the strip or the steal, they get the violation. And, you know, I'm trying to think in my head, how, how would I break that press if I'm the coach? Am I leaving three men down there and just hopefully launching the ball down every yeah. time? Because when you have four forward, it's tough to break that. It sure is. You got to have some height in the backcourt to see over. There's a throw up to Lee. There's a steal at midcourt. Bradford has a swipe and has a steal and a score. 59-30, the Bengals. He has four steals already, and there is that throw, and that's incomplete out of bounds. Yeah, if I'm Arthur Hill, I mean, it's it's easier said than done, right? We're sitting over here. We're not in the game, but I'm staying out of these pocket corners because every time you get in this corner, you're getting trapped. you got to try to stay in the middle of the court and break that press. The Bengals have forced 19 turnovers in this game. They have only turned it over themselves twice. That's a plus 17 margin in turnovers, and that is just unheard of. And that is why it is a 29-point lead for Ottawa Hills. Derek King, senior, the head coach for the Bengals. Layup good. Credit the bucket to Dayton Strickland, the junior center at 6-4. It's now the largest lead of the game for the Bengals. They're up 31 with three and a half to go in the third. Brooks on the perimeter. Another pass to the left block, a pretty one. And we got a double dribble in the left paint. Yeah, Brooks is doing all he can. I mean, he's driving to the lane, he's dishing, he's getting people involved, but it's just not quite enough to break this press and to do it all by yourself. This has got to be a total team effort. There's a lot of pieces for Saginaw Arthur Hill. With Brooks and Dorsey and Boop Hardy, we have not seen a lot of Boop. Counted it a foul. Quarter of a century points for number one. It's been his day already. Quadir Hatchet with a hoop and a heart. And look at that, the spin around the defender, the switch and the ball in the air, around the other shot blocker, off the backboard, taking the hit, knocking it in, plus the foul. I mean, can't speak highly enough about what Hatchet has done during this game. Fun player. I'd take him. Yes, sir. Derek King Sr. formerly coached at Grand Rapids Community College, took them to the Elite Eight. They also won their conference and won the region, got up to number eight in the country. Then he moved on to Grand Rapids Catholic Central for a few years, and then East Grand Rapids for eight. They lost in the quarterfinals, but won their conference in 2012. It's a tough conference to win. There's only 52 teams in it. That's it. <laughs> it's divided amongst colors. The gold, the red, the white, the black. Working around a lumberjack zone, a patient Bengals team finds the hot hand. Three ball, no. Got his own missed it hatchet. It's been that kind of a night. Tripped and fouled inadvertently. That's going to go on Brooks. Looks like Hurd is limping a little. Number 22 for Arthur Hill. Coming up gingerly, but here you get a look at that offensive rebound. Hatchet with the offensive rebound and the reach and foul right there. That's the third on Brooks. It's concerning for head coach Tony Davis. He's assisted by Caden Dottery and Trudell Wright. Derek King Sr., the head coach at Ottawa Hills, is assisted by Forrest Saunders, Stanley Erkson, and Jeremy Wartella. Ottawa Hills five and six after their loss last night, but you could not tell they took a loss last night or look to have any sign of being tired. Is yeah. that something you could look for in the second half? I mean, that's what we talked about early in this game. We'd have to see how their legs are in the fourth quarter, but it has been a track meet, and my goodness, what a block by Brooks. Two-handed. <laughs> He went up to grab that and throw it down his throat. And they're going to give it a foul, but, man, Brooks is one of my favorite players that we've been able to call all season. He's, he's Mr. Do-It-All. I like his size. I like his speed. I like his strength. He's bringing the ball up to beat the press. I mean, him and Hatchet, I'll put those both those guys on my starting lineup any day of the week. Yeah. He's got some leadership and intensity to go with it. Boop will check in. Here comes Hardy, the freshman, along with... 
Jordan Moten, the senior. You get a look at Derek King, senior, the head coach of Ottawa Hills. And uh, a proud head coach, you would assume. Was out doing drills with his team earlier, very active. So, 65 to 30, this one's up to a 35 point lead. Another steal for Ottawa Hills. Bradford with a layup that's good. Bradford with 15 points in this game. Yeah, you gotta be impressed with Ottawa Hills conditioning too. And to keep up this press oh, yeah. all game long, to be that disruptive. No doubt. Three ball off, tip back no. And it's cleared out by McDaniels. Bradford up and under, sweet dish right block, power layup no. Rebound saved by the Lumberjacks and Pat the stat couldn't hang on, it's out of bounds. The All-State quarterback from, what, 1960? 73. 73. And he was a quarterback for a reason. There he is. Because he can't catch. But a nice inbound, nice throwback. <laughs> it was a good throwback. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful gray hair. Pat the stat was a point guard for Mount Pleasant Sacred Heart. Ooh. Long corner right, jumper's good. That breaks a long field goal streak spell. That's Rudison. Glasser, no good. Ball loose, tie up. We got a jump ball, and the possession arrow goes back to the Lumberjacks. Yeah, Lumberjacks have a good history, too. Some great players coming through there. You can't forget about Jason Richardson back in the day, went on to play at Michigan State and Golden State Warriors. And then Dar Tucker. Remember Dar Tucker? Sure. I could jump out of the gym. Absolutely. Right corner three, short. Bengals running out, three on one, odd man rush. Ball getting booted around, things getting sloppy. Lumberjacks with numbers. Left block, shot rejected. Credit the block to Strickland. And we got a whistle behind the play. Yeah, I talked about him in the pregame as a guy I wanted to watch just because of that type of athleticism right there. I mean, during pregame warmups, he was dunking all over the place. Look at this, just a straight vertical, clean block, keeps it in bounds. That's what you want to do. Yes, sir. Under a minute to go in this third quarter. 15-foot jumper, no. Stick back is good. That is Boop. That's the freshman. Keep an eye on him. Give him two points. Two more points. He's had more, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Bradford, high on the right. To the hole, shot up, no, short. Offensive rebound, blocked from behind, out of bounds. And we'll do a ball out of bounds baseline left. Don't forget after this, we've got Benton Harbor who has five state titles to their credit, and Beecher, who has nine bubbles on their resume. Three-pointer no, Boop on the run the other way, getting sized up and getting swatted. That was clean, and that was Dayton Strickland again. I'm telling you, man, that guy could jump out of the gym. Look at this, and he's looking up on the scoreboard right now. Look at that, that is about as clean of a block as you're gonna get. Hard to do that, coming all the way across. And not getting the and body finishing below. across. Yeah. yeah. There's a whistle and that's a foul. It's a hold. It's going to go on Strickland. Just his first. 12 and a half seconds left. The shot clock's dark. The Lumberjacks. We'll see what they dial up into the paint, hook shot off the glass and in. Pretty looking move by Hurd, Marqua Hurd. And a foul in the backcourt, four and a half seconds left. 15 foul for Saginaw Arthur Hill. From the Saginaw Valley League, we saw a team from the Saginaw Valley League last Saturday in Grand Blanc. One second left to the hole, to the rack, and nothing. No shot off for the guy who's got 25 points. It's been all hatchet and all bangles. They got a big lead, a 31-point lead as we go to the fourth. Coming back right after this. Are 
you prepared to be transformed into a better version of yourself? Shaped into a force that others can't imagine. We are part of something bigger. A force that never quits. America's Navy. Forged by the sea. Check us out at Navy.com. We want to thank Irie. Thank you to Irie's Kitchen for taking care of the hospitality room. Stop by Irie's Kitchen for the best Jamaican food in town. Located at 6630 Kalamazoo Avenue Southeast. They got these Southeast that they throw in out here on the yeah, west side. Yeah, yeah. What's the need of the Southeast, North? I don't get that. Anyway. It's like all the lake roads on the I guess, <laughs> east side. Uh, yeah. Listen, it's the only thing wrong with the west side that I see. They're flawless outside of it. Irie is flawless. And they're open every Friday through Sunday. And it's something that you got to get. We thank Irie. Delicious tacos. Much, much more. Ooh. How about that little start, stop, and finish? Credit the bucket to Arian McDaniels. And it's 69 to 36. Bengals back on the board. Boop to the hole. Nice no looker. Left block. Swatted by who else? The Strickland Law again. And the finish with a right hand for Hatchet. He has 27. <laughs> Strickland has got a little bounce in his step right now as he's walking back to that rim, too. He has protected it all game long. He's taking it personal, hasn't he? Crowd starting to file in here at the Gotta Get It Classic as the energy builds, the excitement builds. What a day ahead we have. Benton Harbor and Beecher are next. Hudsonville and Carmen Ainsworth to follow. Kalamazoo Central will take on Brother Rice. Grand Rapids Christian will take on Warren De La Salle, state champion from a year ago. And East Kentwood and Orchard Lake St. Mary's in the finale that's expected to start at 8.45 tonight. All right, Ottawa Hills with the basketball, one minute into the fourth quarter. Ottawa Hills, shooting 51% in this game. Hustle plays like that all day to go with it. Pocket left three to make it hurt, and he did. Credit Shaman Jarrett with a triple. Shaman! Love that name. <laughs> That's right. Boop with a dish. Reverse lay-in is pretty. Assist from Hardy. Reverse lay-in by Brooks, who's been their best player today. There's a steal in the backcourt. Boop did it. Ball loose, boop to the hole, and scores it. So count it for Dion Quarvis, boop Hardy, the freshman sensation, foul in the backcourt with another attempt. Arthur Hill giving uh, Ottawa Hills a little bit taste of their own medicine, giving them that full court press, couple turnovers on the way in. Strickland was kind of off balance, so he just kind of threw it in, and they were able to get it. Strickland was able to get a block, but Boop able to get it back and in the hoop, and then here almost forcing another turnover. So Arthur Hill giving it back to him a little bit. Yeah, and you gotta like it. You see this head coach, Tony Davis, for Arthur Hill. Six guys play for the Saginaw Tot Knights, by the way. Terry scored 40 in a game for the Saginaw Tot Knights this year. Lina Brooks Jr. plays for Bates Fundamentals. He has the ball here, and he hammers it home with a right hand. Brooks rocks the rim, and Arthur Hill with some juice in the fourth stick. And here's that press causing trouble again, getting another turnover, and you love that look by Brooks. You know. He's been frustrated all game. This is not a fun game when your teams get down like this, but to get a highlight real dunk like that, it feels good, especially after all the effort he's been put, putting forward specifically. Been a big day for Brooks. 17 points, eight rebounds, and four blocks. Pulls up right elbow here, no. And he has a couple assists to go with it, so he's filling up the entire stat sheet. Yes, he has. The two time in the backcourt. And now the throw ahead. Open, 4-3, Splash City. Craig Erskine Jr. with a triple. And the Bengals' lead climbs to 35. He has such a pretty shot. That's his second three of the game. Brooks with an answer. Splash City from the top side. Threes are raining. 
And Brooks's tally is up to 20. There's a steal. Shots missed, might have been blocked. That's from Hilliard. Pull up dead spot left, triple short. Rebound and the throw ahead. Showtime coming up. Brooks hammers at home, assist from Hurd. And this press has done some good things for Arthur Hill. There it is again. Boop with a steal, Boop with a slam. Not expect a timeout. And timeout <laughs> on the floor. <laughs> How about it? Here come the Lumberjacks. Derek King, senior, wants timeout. And he's Catwood. We'll take it with him. Back in a minute. Every year, Pinos donates $4,000 worth of scholarships to EK athletes and fine arts students to continue furthering our successes on and off the field and on and off the stage. We wanted to take this moment to thank Pepinos for their continued support of East Catwood High School athletics and fine arts programs like theaters, band, and more. Thank you, Pepinos. Thank you, Pepinos. Thank you, Pepinos. Thank you, Pepinos. The Saginaw Valley League, Grand Blank, and Carmen Ainsworth the top. You can put Heritage and Davison in the discussion. Dow's got some smoke out here. But uh, look, we're going to see Flint Carmen Ainsworth later. But the team in front of us today, Saginaw Arthur Hill, looking for their first league win, three and six. A young team and a young program stick, and, and you know they're on the rise. Yeah, definitely. You see a lot of the pieces. They just got to put it all together. And when you're facing a team like Ottawa Hills that just puts the constant pressure on you, you'll grow up in a hurry. You'll yeah. go back, watch this game film, and understand. Yes, sir. Gamble attempt there by Hardy. Short corner floaters too strong. The big boy there for the left block, bang in. And that, again, is Gibson. He's got a bucket. He's so good at creating space between him and his defender with just a little bump. Yes, sir. Shot is off the mark. No good. So, substitution, they will check Gibson out. And uh, into the game comes uh, Derek King Jr. We should uh, perhaps assume that's the head coach's son. I make no assumptions. Well, I'll make them. <laughs> <laughs> well, full court pressure. And no, that's a good thing. You're right. You should not make assumptions <laughs> for the listeners out there. The press is broken. It's a three on two. If they want it, they do, and they bang it in. The bank is open on the west side of the state on a Saturday. And that is experienced by Buchanan. That's Tyrez Buchanan. No relation to our camera two operator today, Kyle Buchanan. Very similar dance moves I've heard, though. Yeah, we saw uh, C. Bukes uh, throw a little dance floor move in front of us. Perhaps some foreshadowing of what we could see at the Bob later tonight. <laughs> 3.49 left in the fourth. 81 points for the Bengals. Behind 27 from Mr. Hatchet. Quad Deer has put on a clinic. He hasn't been the only guy. It's been a real nice team-oriented basketball game for uh, Ottawa Hills. Yeah, definitely. It, I mean, when you're playing that type of press defense, it's got to be your team all on a string, all doing the same things, covering up, knowing the angles, taking away passes. And that's what I'm saying. I'm thinking about Ottawa Hills practices. Those can't be fun practices, right? they, they, they got to be a lot of conditioning, a lot of press. You're trying to break it on the offensive end. And it's one of those things that throughout the year, it's going to keep building upon itself. Right. Party line right, first free throws good. And I would rather have some not-so-fun practices and 31-point leads in ball games. Yeah, that's fair. This is Boop Hardy, arguably the best freshman in this year's Got to Get It Hoop Classic. He's having a great season. 
quenches on the free throw. It's a clean 30 point lead now for Ottawa Hills. 81 to 51. There's a steal by Boop. He'll throw down another dunk. And that's a windmill. Nobody saw that coming. How about it? A big boop and bop and another steal. Three ball in and out. No. And uh, the freshman showing why he might be the best freshman in this classic. <laughs> My goodness. He gets a, actually no pressure from the defense. And he's able to go up windmill jam. Man, that kid's got some ups. For being a freshman, like I was saying earlier, imagine when he's a senior, how great of a basketball player he's going to be. A lot of fun to watch. Boop Ooh. again on the baseline with a two-hand lay-in. He's a freshman, and it's a triple team in the backcourt that the Bengals evade. Nice dime piece, kick out, pocket left three short. Arthur Hill wants to run. Watch out here. Brooks with a banger against the Bengals with three to go in the fourth. And Arthur Hill says we're going to show out somehow. And that's the thing. When you're full court pressing like that, you're able to break it and get those runouts. That's it. But, man, the highlight reel that Arthur Hill has out of this game is pretty wild. <laughs> Been fun to watch. Three ball in front of his bench is through. That's Alphonse Sanders, timeout on the floor, 2.39 to go. So, uh, what a high scoring affair we have, an action packed first game. Not all the paces are this way, but how about the, the Brooks slam show along with a freshman boo party? And then they respond with a three pointer. This has been a highlight filled fourth quarter here at the Gotta Get It Classic, and that's how it's going to be all game, all day long, honestly. There's going to be some tremendous athletes, but to watch this dunk show early on gets you ready to go for the rest of the day, doesn't it, Chad? It sure does. We will see Flint Beecher, led by head coach Marquise Gray, next, and Benton Harbor, led by head coach Corey Sterling. So those two will go at it. A lot of great history in both programs, but yep. Beecher with nine state titles to their credit. And when Marquise Gray walks in the building, you notice that man. Yes, you do. <laughs> He's a large dude. Yes, he is. And a good coach. He is a darn good one. He's got some great players. Kiana Menefield, along with uh, Robert Lee Jr., Jalen Townsend and company. Kevin Tiggs, so a lot of fun to be had, but 2.39 left here in the fourth. What are you looking for coming out of that Lumberjack huddle? Uh, for the Lumberjacks, just keep doing it. Press, 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 press. Let's try to just have some fun at least here in the last 2.37 so you can leave this tournament with your head held high and play under control and figure some things out. Yep. Boop, behind the back, lost it. And tried to get it back three on one the other way. Lay in, rejected. That swat came by way of Hurd, his second of the day. Bengals get it back, though. 2.15 left in this one. There's a steal. Lumberjacks have had more of those in the second half. And how about that little defensive back play? <laughs> I like that. Isn't that cool, a little shield play? He was able that. to track him down and get in front of him, stop him from being able to receive that pass. There's and no pass interference? And I was going to say, it's not a foul. It's not pass <laughs> interference. That's good basketball. Yeah. Savvy nonetheless. Dribble drive attack, short shot, offensive rebound, reverse blocked in the paint. Lumberjacks with a near steal. Now it is a steal. And here we go. Brooks to the hole, handoff, popped out. Ruddison slows it down to Brooks. Attack, dump. Dunk missed, rebound, stick back, no. Wanted three, not two. And with 94 seconds left, the Lumberjacks showing some life, albeit late. Yeah, and I know we've talked about it pretty much throughout the whole game, but even down 27, Brooks, his effort, he's still trying out there. He's facilitating for his team. He's dunking. He's trying to get everything he can do and to go for his team. And it's admirable. You know, it's good to see a kid out there down 27 with a minute 34 left, still playing like it's a tie ball game. You bet. Dorsey to the line. Misses the first. He's now two of three from the strike. Make it two of four. Tough luck miss on the second. 
And ball out of bounds back to Benton, excuse me, Ottawa Hills. Benton Harbor is next. The Benton Harbor Tigers and the Ottawa Hills Bengals. A little confusing for a guy like me, not as familiar with these cats. Cats, <laughs> very good. Oh, we're a team for a reason. Poop with a rebound, that's good. Poop to the hole, dumped down to the right block, and the thought was beautiful. But they'll have to reset ball out of bounds. No, they'll turn it over. There was no touch. There you get a look at the bench. Good look there at Ottawa Hills. This is when all the jokes are funny on the bench. To the hole, kick back. Been impressed with Ottawa Hills' ball movement stick and their unselfishness. Just all the way around, yeah. When they were attacking the zone earlier, they were making sure they were getting into the middle, then finding their shooters. They were yeah. hitting their three-point shots. Everything went right today for Ottawa Hills, and that comes with preparation. And like we said, we yep. were kind of worried about them playing last night. Maybe their legs wouldn't be into it, but they No worries. Nope, no worries <laughs> at all. They're, they're above the rim team even here in the fourth quarter. Yep. 50 seconds left, Boop with a three, that's short. And Ottawa Hills fouled in the backcourt. That means free throws coming up, a one and one opportunity, line left. And the cool thing for Ottawa Hills, I mean, you've played in tournaments, I've played in baseball tournaments around the country and stuff like that. Whenever you're the early game, you get it out of the way, you dominate. Now the rest of the day is just fun. Yeah, I'm, just I'm just watching basketball, bleachers, right. Eating popcorn. Having a good time, yeah. watching other teams. Sure. Telling Miss everybody about your performance, you know. Yeah, we won. <laughs> right? Yeah, we won by 30, no big deal. Yeah, we forced uh, 37 turnovers, no big deal. <laughs> oh man, Bucket is good. They will credit that to, to number 15, Tyler Dorsey, as they should. 84-59. Shot up, no, it's short, but an attack of that baseline like it should be attacked by Willie Duke. He's been fun to watch. He's been fun to watch, and so is Dorsey. You could tell he's a young player, but man, he, when he gets his legs underneath him, he's going to be able to jump out of the gym too. They have some two good long people that will be turning next year with Brooks and Dorsey. That's going to be formidable. Hardy just a freshman, Brooks just a junior, Dorsey just a sophomore, all coming back. Yeah, this will be a fun team to watch going forward, that's for sure. Duke line left, we'll have our G of the game quickly to follow this one. 22.9 seconds left, free throw good, 86-59. Shot clock is dark, it's a steal for Ottawa Hills. Shot off the glass, no. That's from Herskin Jr. One more crack at it. alley goes awry and too tall. Oh, that would have been a fun way to end this game. And those two, you can tell next year when those two get a little more time playing together and they're able to find those alley-oops, <laughs> it's going to be showtime in Saginaw. You bet. Well, it's been fun, but game one is in the books. And the Bengals of Ottawa Hills win it 86-59 to over Saginaw Arthur Hill. Our G of the game is next. Coming back after these. Every year, Pinos donates $4,000 worth of scholarships to EK athletes and fine arts students to continue furthering our successes on and off the field and on and off the stage. We wanted to take this moment to thank the Pinos for their continued support of East Cowood High School athletics and fine arts programs like theaters, band, and more. Thank you, Pepinos. Thank you, Pepinos. Thank you, Pepinos. Thank you, Pepinos. Turn this way. Welcome back to East Kentwood High School and the Gotta Get It Classic. Time now for our G of the Game. 
Ottawa Hills wins it 86-59 over Arthur Hill. We're here with our G of the game, and it's none other than Quadir Hatchet. The senior guard went off mm -hmm. here tonight, and uh, Quadir, congratulations. Finished this game with 27 points. Mm -hmm. uh, talk about the win. You had to play last night in a tough one, a tight one against Grand Rapids Catholic Central. You guys bounced right back in a big way. Talk about how you were able to get off to a fast start and never slow down. Uh, coach just told us, like, in practice, like, just play hard. The first four minutes of the game and the first four minutes of halftime, just play hard. So that's what we did. We had got it going early. You got it going early, but, I mean, you guys were unselfish with the basketball. Talk about this team. I mean, you look at the record, five and six. I mean, we watch you here today. We haven't seen a lot of you, to be fair, but... I mean, you look like a team that could be 10-0 and and ranked. How close is this team to really reaching its potential? Uh, we just got to figure a couple things out. I feel like we had every, like, competed with every team. We just can't close games out, so that's something we got to get better at. We work on it every day during practice. Do you prefer to play like a back-to-back -back like you did? I mean, obviously you, pr you showed out like that, but, I mean, is that something you'd prefer or would you want a break? I mean, it's fun, so I don't care what we play. It's fun. I love playing well, you can tell you're fun to watch. Any thoughts for college for you at playing at the next level? Uh, any any uh, commitments yet or, or still have your options open? Yeah, I still got my options open. Well, looks like you're going to have a lot of options, young man. Congratulations. He is our G of the game, Quadir Hatchet of Ottawa Hills High School. 27 points and his team win here tonight. Thanks, Quadir. He's our G of the game. Put that hat on, will you? G of the game. Wow, dear Hatchet. Yeah, wear it with pride. We appreciate you. Congratulations, young man. Thank you. All right, there he is, Quadir Hatchet. Ottawa Hills with a win. The Bengals get a big one here today to start off the Gotta Get It Classic. We're coming back to wrap things up. No, we're not. We're going to close things out. Thanks so much for watching. We've got our game two on a separate link. Benton Harbor and Beecher coming up on a separate link after this. For my partner, Sam Stick Day, my name's Chad Bush. Thanks for watching. So long, everybody.